I'm Martha Maurer from the KTAR Newsroom, and today I'm joined by KTAR News reporter Griselda Satino. She broke a story for us this week regarding hundreds of immigrants who are seeking asylum into the U.S., have been released from Immigration and Customs Enforcement custody along the border, and have now been brought into different parts of Arizona. Particularly, about 100 of them arrived in Phoenix yesterday evening, uh, yesterday being Monday, and they have been received at a church here in Phoenix. So before we begin to talk about why this is happening, Griselda, tell us a little bit about what it was like when you were at this church. What church was it and, and what did you see? Yeah, so it was Shadow Rock United Church of Christ in Phoenix, and uh, when I got there, uh, there were a, a bunch of volunteers that were uh, coming in. Uh, they were setting up a room filled with chairs, with tables, just getting ready for the immigrants to arrive, um, and th this is where they were go first going to be fed. So they arrived around 5, uh, and um, the families, you know, just started uh, coming down from the bus buses. There were two large buses. Uh, they were there with uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement officials that were dropping them off as they were coming down from the buses uh, there were a lot of volunteers lined up just greeting them uh, and telling them it's gonna be okay because you could see some of them had uh, you know a look of, of being uh, scared they they looked like they were uh, just you know not really knowing what was happening um, so the the volunteers were really there just trying to calm them down and just telling them it's gonna be okay and a lot of them uh, spoke Spanish to them uh, we could we we did learn that a lot of them are from Guatemala, so a lot of them were speaking Spanish to uh, to these individuals. So Central America, uh, the place where a lot of these immigrants were coming from, now we, we have learned that uh, these immigrants are showing up at the border and they're asking for asylum. And essentially, Border Patrol and Customs Enforcement is having to deal with the large volume of people that are showing up. So I'll actually read you part of a statement that we received from ICE. Um, they tell us that after decades of inaction by Congress, the government remains severely constrained in its ability to detain and promptly remove families that have no legal basis to remain in the United States. They go on to say that as a result, units, family units, continue to cross the border at high volumes and are likely to continue to do so as they face no consequences for their actions. However, ICE is no longer able and have the capacity to conduct reviews without risking a violation of the Flores limitations, which deals with how long minors can stay in Border Patrol and ICE custody. Now they do tell us that these family units and these immigrants that are being dropped off at various places across the state will have to show up for court. They may uh, be enrolled in ICE's uh, alternatives to detention program or be issued orders of uh, recognizance prior to them being released, parole, supervisory re requirements, but at the end of the day they, they are given court hearings. But tell us, Griselda, when, when you first arrived there, because you know you were one of the only ones, only right. media in the English speaking market that was there as they arrived, you had a chance to speak to the people at the church. Right. Tell us what they told you yeah. about. This is a, a large number of people right. that were showing up um, from immigration custody. Usually they don't see that many. Right, so this church um, has a reputation of helping these immigrant families. Um, so they usually get about you know, 20, 30, 40 uh, uh, immigrants that come in that are being released by uh, ICE, uh, and, um, but they've never had this amount of people. Uh, they were saying that this is the, the, the largest number of people that they've ever had. Um, so they, it was all hands on deck. They had a bunch of volunteers that were bringing in, bringing in food, uh, bringing in uh, blankets for, for them to be able to sleep at the church, stuffed animals for the kids, water, a bunch of different things for these families. Um, because like I said, it was a large amount of people that they just had never been uh, handling before. And on your Twitter page, you posted some videos mm -hmm. as the families were getting off the bus, and you know we couldn't see their faces because we right. wanted to protect their identities. They were at, they asked us not to do that. Uh, but what was it like? What what yeah. kind of what was on their faces? How were they feeling? Yeah, you could see that a, a lot of the little kids were scared. Uh, some of them were, you know, you could see that they were about to break down crying because they were just scared. Um, the the parents also looked a little bit uh, terrified. But like I said, the, the volunteers really did a good job of trying to calm those fears down. 
down um, and just giving them hugs uh, you know some of the moms they were just hugging them and telling them it's going to be okay um, and um, a lot of them were also carrying backpacks uh, duffel bags uh, so you could tell that you know they had been at a some sort of uh, place before coming here they all looked like they were clean had new clothes on so um, you could tell that they had been somewhere before coming here to Phoenix and Governor Ducey is obviously aware of the situation we asked him about it when he joined um, Mac and Gatos on KTAR yesterday evening and here's what he had to say we've got ice releasing more than 400 asylum seekers into Arizona and there's like a coalition of churches and organizations across Arizona that are beginning to accept immigrants. Um, Governor, I know you know about this. What do you make of it? Are you involved in any of this? What What's the story? Did well, you get a heads up? Well, of course, we're communicating with the federal government, <laughs> Homeland Security. Thank goodness for our nonprofit community, the NGOs, the faith-based community. These are people that are going to go through the process th with the federal government as they seek asylum, but some of these organizations are going to help them find shelter and places to, to, to live. That, this is part of the surge of activity that's happened at the border. As the governor of Arizona, does, is this a headache for you, or is this worrisome for you, or is this, hey, there's, there's a plan, we contact the federal government, things will be fine? I think things will be fine, but of course public safety is always my top concern. And I know that there are people in other countries that look to our country as a place for asylum, and, and I want to make sure that we follow that process properly. So there's some, some worry there, of, of course, with what's happened at the, with the activity. And as a border governor, this is part of the job description. Governor Doug Ducey joins us uh, in studio. Um, okay, that sounds really nice, but are you on the phone with D.C. going, come on? Come on, these are 400 people that you're releasing. I mean, is there? Do you do you feel frustrated like we are that there's got to be a better way to do this instead of giving these churches or these NGOs a couple of days notice that you're going to have these people that need to have support? Oh, sure. Well, there's a give and take between us and and Washington D.C. Uh about what they can do better in terms of process. I do think that they've reached out to us and tried to work with us in a partnership fashion, but the surge of illegal activity at the border, it does cause a stress on, on, on a border state, and it's one that I think we've so far so good have handled well. If you want to learn more about this story, head to KTAR.com. We have more in-depth coverage of what happened yesterday as the immigrants arrived at this church in Phoenix, what has been building up since then with the issues regarding immigration and the large amount of people that are showing up at the border. And, uh, you know, this coming just months after a, a large issue with the separation of families at the border. So keep it here on KTAR. We'll continue to talk about it throughout the day on KTAR News 92.3 FM. You can listen to us online and, of course, the story and all its details are at ktar.com. I'm Bob McClay. Here's our top story.